ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Verily all praise all thanks all glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him <coughs> we glorify him and we always seek his help We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of ourselves and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our sins whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with guidance no one can escape and whomsoever Allah leaves us straight no one can guide i bear witness that there is no god worthy of being worshiped except Allah and i bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his final messenger. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Karim, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, be mindful of Allah and secure yourself in dying in true submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also <clears throat> calls on mankind when he says ya ayyuhan nas taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa attaqu Allah alladhi tasaaluna bihi wal arham wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba o mankind O children of Adam, be mindful of your Lord, the one who created you from a single soul. And the one who has and had the ability from this soul to make to create its mate. And the one who from these from this pair created a multitude of men and a multitude of women. So be mindful of your Lord, the one to whom you claim your right, and the one who will question you on the day of judgment. Verily, Allah over us is well informed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls on the believers again. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, taqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda, yuslih lakum a'malakum, وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O oh, you who believe, be mindful of your Lord and only say that which is right. Control your emotions. Only say that which is right. Only say that which will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you say that which is right, He will manage your affairs in this dunya. And He will manage your affairs in the hereafter by forgiving your sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta gives us the ruler for which we measure true success. Whomsoever obeys Allah and obeys His messenger will definitely obtain the ultimate success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the successful. Allahumma ameen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this last part, obeying Allah and obeying the Messenger, should be taken holistically, not cherry picking. What do I want to obey from the Messenger and what do I want to reject from the Messenger? What do I want to obey from Allah and what do I want to reject from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The believers as described in the Quran, they say we believe in all of it, it is all from Allah. 
The believers say what? We believe in all of it and all comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the attitude of the believer. So cherry picking, cherry picking in our religion leads to all these different <clears throat> sects and factions that act on the name of Islam and on behalf of us as well. <clears throat> Islam, just a clear uh, position, Islam rejects all forms of extremism. All forms of extremism. Our beloved Messenger وسلم, says in hadith that's related in Sahih Bukhari, Allah. the Prophet said, Inna dina yusra, the deen is easy. وَلَا يُشَادَ الدِّينَ أَحَدًا إِلَّا غَلَبَهُ And no one becomes extreme in the religion except that it overtakes him. فَسَبْدِدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا So seek the straight path. Seek nearness to Allah in that effort. وَأَبْشِرُوا And have the glad tidings that Allah will reward you. وَاسْتَعِينُوا And seek help. Seek help. Seek help in the morning prayer, afternoon prayer, and in the evening prayer. Let's go back. I said, O man, you to Allah wa Rasulahu, faqad faza fawzan adima. You want to succeed? Then you obey the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that the deen is ease. And no one becomes extreme in the religion except that it leads him to his own destruction. That is the teachings of the Prophet. ﷺ. So Islam rejects all types of extremism, violence, the killing of innocent. And this is based also on the Quran. And based on the first criteria of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ in when, when after 13 years of being oppressed and abused and some of the companions being killed, after 13 years given the permission to defend themselves, with all these emotions, with all this suffering, what was the instructions of the Messenger of Allah Do not kill women, children, the innocent. Do not kill the non-combatants. Clear cut instruction in the first battle of Badr. That is the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even the, that, that's a leader. That's a leader that's not driven by his emotion. That he knows what is best for the community. He knows what is best. He's looking for, from a distance. Imagine if he were to say, you know, kill everyone in, the, in, in your way. Then throughout the generations and generations, followers of the Prophet will do the same. But he set the criteria, and that is a hujja lana awalayna. That is a proof for us or against us on the day of judgment. We obey the messenger, are we following him or not? He is our guide. Islam rejects all form of Bigotry, both against non-Muslims and against Muslims. Not only against Muslims, against all. And Islam rejects the, the promotion of hatred and fear that mainly affects the general population that's in the dark. It affects us, and it affects the general populations, your co-workers, your friends, your neighbors. For whose agenda? Allah SWT knows best. Right? Allah SWT is the knower of the unseen. Allah knows best. Now in every, since the last Jummah that I stood in this minbar, 
two tragedies occurred. I do the khutbah typically on the first Friday of the, of the month. In between the first Friday and the second Friday and the other month, we had the tragedy in Paris. We had the tra three tragedies also. There's more, of course. The tragedy in, in, in Lebanon, the tragedy in recently in, in, in California. That's close to home, right? This is our home where we live, where our families live, where we work where our children go to school. This is our home. This is our home. So it's coming close to home. So the people, the victims that died were mothers, fathers, husbands, sisters, cousins, neighbors, and it's painful to know that one innocent person gets killed. That's the character of the believer. Not because if a person dies and he's not a Muslim that I'm not going to grieve. Yes, I grieve for, the, for a, a dead that dies in Palestine, in Syria, in Iraq, and we have shed tears. Afghanistan, all across the board. Any innocent civilian that dies should cause us pain. Not, oh, he's not from us, or no, he's not a Muslim, or he's not this. Not. Imagine the message of Allah when he saw a person that died that wasn't Muslim, he, he felt pain that he wasn't able to, to, to guide him to Islam. He felt pain that he slipped from his hands. That is the message of Allah. That is the concern that he had for humanity. Not this, not this feeling of hatred, us against them, but the feeling of rahmah, of forgiveness. After 23 years, he went back to Mecca and, for, and forgave them. Didn't take revenge. Subhanallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of all this hardship that we face, we face as a community and the general community faces as well. Everyone has a sense of fear, grief, pain. You think about your children. You think about many different factors. I wanted to give you, and sometimes when you're, when you're in that need, you don't find a source to vent to, and you don't find someone to guide you or help you. And many times, this is what leads some of our youth into frustration and doing things, quote unquote, on the, in the name of Islam. But it was based on emotions. So I want to give you, or remind you, of two ayats in Surah Al-Baqarah. And I want you to, to implement this. If you want to make benefit of this Jummah, then you implement it. If not, then it's on you. If you have any stress, if you have any concern, if, you, if you're if you overwhelmed and fear about your children, then you're not taking action, then khalas, it's also your fault if you don't take action. That's the reality. The Muslim, when he receives a reminder, as Allah says, the reminder benefits the believers. So you see your level of belief, the way we respond. The Muslim is not the, way, the one that reacts. The Muslim is the one that proactively acts. He responds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And seek assistance through patience and prayer. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ And it is difficult. It is difficult for someone to be overwhelmed and focus himself and go and stand in prayer when he is in a state of fear or anger, right? It's difficult to control yourself. But Allah says, it is difficult. Allah knows that it's difficult. 
But it is difficult except for those who are humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's two words, there's khushu and khudu. The khudu is the physical humbleness that you show that you're humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the khushu is the internal humbleness. So this is difficult except to those who, are, who have khushu. And Allah describes who are those that have khushu. الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ Those, those that know, and the word here, done, is not shak. Do you hear the word done? Because sometimes words in the Qur'an, if you translate them literally, gives the, the, the wrong meaning. Right? Done means think, thought. But here means certainty. Right? Knowledge. Those that know, that they will meet their Lord. Those that are certain that they will meet their Lord. And they know that to Him is the return. So those that turn to Allah, seeking patience with Allah, seeking help with Allah, in patience, having a certainty that Allah, we're going to return to you. We're going to meet you on the day of judgment. Help us. Those that have certainty in the hereafter. Man seeks assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he feels powerless, unable to manage some of his affairs. Sometimes encounters diff hardship, difficulties that he's unaware of. He doesn't know how to deal with them. And many times the easiest thing is to just run away from the difficulty, not to face the difficulty. But if we run away from the difficulty, then another difficulty arises, and another difficulty arises, and then we're surrounded by difficulties. And then we want to take our lives because we gave up, because we only ran away from the hardship. We never faced it. So he turned, the believer turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he knows that Allah is the best helper, that Allah is the all-knower, so he can bless us with knowledge and understanding and clarity in times of ignorance and in times of, of, of doubt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to make matters clear to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to change our condition. But as he says, I would not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of that which is in their heart. Ask yourself, ask yourself, where do you place Allah? Ask yourself, do you guard your five prayers? Ask yourself, do you guard your reading of the Quran? Do you fulfill your obligations? If you don't fulfill your obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then don't expect others to fulfill their obligations to you. Again, if we don't fulfill our obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't expect the world to fulfill their obligations to you. If you don't fulfill the obligations to your neighbors, don't expect your neighbors to show sympathy for you or to fulfill the obligations to you. We have responsibilities, brothers and sisters. It is not what I gain from this. It is how can I, as a Muslim, strive to pay khidmah to this beautiful deen? to this beautiful way of life that Allah blessed us with. How much khidmah do we do? How much time do we spend thinking about how to benefit our neighbors and our community in, this, in, in our country? Brothers and sisters, there is a moment in Jummah when the dua is accepted. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen 
Salatu wa salamu ala sallu musayin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise and thanks are due to Allah and the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and all those who follow him until their judgment. We started our khutbah stating our position as Muslims and the, the Islamic position on how Islam rejects extremism, all types of extremism. Islam rejects bigotry, all types of bigotry. And Islam rejects the inciting of fear and Islamophobia. And then we took some time to, to mention a little bit about the victims that died in San Bernardino. Bernardino. So I ask Allah SWT to bless the people in Bernardino with ease. I ask Allah SWT to bless their families with ease. I ask Allah SWT to bless the Muslim community in Bernardino with ease. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> The Perlin Islamic Educational, the Perlin Islamic Center strives, strives in outreach of many forms. And these outreach efforts are not only outreach efforts that we establish as a reaction to current affairs. These outreach efforts are sincerely done for the sake of the virtue of it. Some of these outreach efforts are, for example, setting up educational booths at the local flea markets. We go and engage hundreds and hundreds of people and we give them information about Islam and we answer questions about Islam and we spend a few hours clearing misconceptions about Islam and it's known that we're not trying to convert them to Islam because Allah is the one that guides, we can't guide anyone. But our duty is for us is to proclaim the message. That's it. Then we also developed and inshallah we're, we're going to engage in, in that uh, uh, dawah, uh, uh, that educational uh, booth inshallah tomorrow we also have we also have developed in this year and then just this year by itself our interfaith relations and we managed to interact with one church because our our objective is to develop relationships not to try to convert them they convert us it's how can we build a relationship to better serve the city of Pearland and that will bring benefit to all of the city of Pearland, Muslims and non-Muslims. When they see interfaith, people of faith, striving together for the greater good of this city. We have met with the same church eight times this year. Eight times. Three times at their locations, three times at our location, Ramadan, etc the interfaith garden and it has developed momentum to such an extent that some of the congregants for that church started participating in the in the course that we started on Wednesday an introduction to the Arabic language I sold it to them I said it's you know there's no money back guarantee because it's free so I sold it to them I said I guarantee that in 12 classes you'll be able to read words in Arabic. Just try it uh, for curiosity's sake. And they accept it. And they participated. Not only that, they participated also in the program that I invited them to when uh, our brother Hajj Nur al-Din, the, the uh, master calligrapher, came on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Some of the church members also attended. 
That's what we want to do. We want to exchange these beautiful, these benefits. They got to learn about the history of Islam in China and the beautiful messages in China. Islam reaching China since the year of 756 with millions and millions and millions of Muslims that have their own culture. So we have stri uh, striven to develop these not superficial poster type interfaith relations. Not the ones that we stand together, take a picture once a year, and we are doing something. That is actually doing something. Is actually really working together. Is actually getting to know them, getting to know even their pain and their hardships and their challenges. And then, as Muslims, how can we help as well? This is dawah. But dawah is demonstrating without expecting anything in return that you are fulfilling your religious obligations, that you are a Muslim. Dawah, you don't have to tell people Islam is the right religion. You demonstrate to them by your actions. If, you are, if your tongue contradicts your actions, then they immediately say this person is a hypocrite. He's saying what he doesn't do. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la tafa'alun. Oh, you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? Don't you know it's grievous in the sight of Allah for you to say that which you do not do? Surah As-Saf. Right? So regardless if we like it or not, it doesn't mean that, oh, because I'm going to be accountable, I'm not going to say anything. La, because you're accountable. You're a Muslim, you're accountable. There's no more prophets. You have the message. Allah bless you with the Quran. Allah bless you with Islam. You're going to keep it for yourself? How about if the tables turn? How about if you were straight and the other people were guided, wouldn't you want them to come and reach out to you and save you from the hellfire? Yes. So want for others what you want for yourself. Want for others what you want for yourself. Sincerely. Bila You want no hidden agenda. No hidden agenda. We do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last but not least, we also have developed a program that takes place once a year. And this is for the new Muslims. The new Muslims have many challenges. The new Muslims, for example, there was a, there was two sisters from different countries. One of them was given a Quran by a brother. And she began to read the Quran. When she read the whole Quran, she felt that, you know, I believe in, in, in what's in the Quran. Then she's like, what next? What next? What, what next? What do I have to do next? And subhanAllah, she prayed. She said, oh, oh God, send me something to know what to do next. Two days later, the brother followed up. This is very important. The brother followed up and called her. Uh, uh, are you ready to go to the mosque? She said, yes. She, she felt Allah answered my, God answered my prayer. Right? She went to the mosque. She met a sister. The sister brought her to side by side and prayed with her. So she experienced the prayer for the first time. And then she was attending the classes of the Sheikh and actually is the same message that I accepted Islam in. And, and he taught her for several weeks and then she decided to accept Islam after accepting Islam her husband divorced her and she has been for the past 11 years a single mother just because of Islam Another sister from Uruguay came to America right after September 11, and she came to volunteer as a nurse. In the midst of all this media that was going around and, and the libraries being empty, the libraries that contained Islamic books were empty because people became interested in, and curious about what is Islam, right? 
this sister also was one of those that became curious and began to learn and ended up saying, wait a minute, this that is being said is not what Islam teaches and she accepted Islam. When she accepted Islam, a mother of two got fired and her, her husband also divorced her. That masjid is unique to many masajid in the U.S. We are in a unique situation here in Houston. We have a lot of masajid. We have many different places to go. Other places in the U.S. I had a sister contact me from North Carolina saying, the closest masjid to me is three hours. How do I pray Jummah? I'm a new Muslim. I want to learn. And there is no Muslims in my area. So Alhamdulillah, just to conclude, brothers and sisters, we established this program two years ago, which is the, the New Muslim Winter Event. And Alhamdulillah, the first year that we established it, three people accepted Islam. And that wasn't even the intent. After every Salah, after Dhuhr, one person, after Asr, one person, and when everybody was walking away, one brother came up and said, I want to become Muslim. And I had to stop the people that were walking out. Wait, wait, wait. There's somebody going to make shahada. That's here, right here. In your masjid. In your masjid. So now you think about the du'as that we have to make for those that strove and even fought, right, for the establishment of this masjid. How many times did we make du'a for them before, besides even criticizing them? Allah would not let any effort go to waste. So now, alhamdulillah, this is the third year that we're doing this program. And that year, people came from all over Houston. From all the way from Champion Forest. They came. And one of the persons that accepted Islam was from Champion Forest. Okay? So brothers and sisters, I would like you, I would ask you, I would beg you to mark your calendar. That this event is not only for new Muslims is for the community at large as well. Come and welcome them. We have five speakers confirmed. We have two organizations confirmed. And this is on a volunteer basis. There's no honorarium. There's no payment. They're coming because they believe in this cause. So brothers and sisters, we will have some bouncy houses and some activities for the youth as well, inshallah. But come and support this effort. I will ask you to whenever you think about supporting an effort is that also don't forget the masjid that you pray in. Don't forget your community. Don't forget the prayer in the Islamic center. Don't forget the effort. Come learn about the effort. Come learn about the effort and become active for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept Rabbana tina fi dunya hasana wa fi la akhirati hasana wa qina la wa Rabbana tina bila dunka wa hayi lana min amarina rashada Rabbana faqfil lana dunubana wa kaffirna sayyatina tawafana mal abrar Allahumma shfi mardana marda muslimin Allahumma aslah wa al muslimin fi kulli makan 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 Allahumma aslah wa al muslimin fi kulli والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وصلى الله وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين